more 4.3 properties of logarithmic equations. So now we're going to use the properties of logarithms to condense the logarithmic expression below. All right, and we're going to write the expression as a single logarithm with a coefficient of 1. Where possible, evaluate logarithm expressions. Okay, so here we go. Let's try this. So we are adding two logarithms. So since we're adding two logarithms, what we can do is we can simply take this argument and this argument and multiply them together in the single one. And before we do that, we're going to want to take this exponent, this exponent right there, or that coefficient, and stick it back up there as an exponent, right? Okay, so we're going to rewrite this as log y plus log z, but I needed to put that coefficient back up as an exponent, so now what I can do is so now that I just have these two arguments and no coefficient here, I can simply multiply these two arguments together in a single log. So I end up with y, z, 15. And that's a single log with a one coefficient. So we got it. Yay. Okay, next one. So I'm going to first bring these coefficients back up as exponents. Bring this coefficient to back up as an exponent. So we end up with log base b of x to the third plus log base b z to the second. And what you have is now we have an argument there and an argument there. We're adding these together. So we can simply multiply together those two arguments within the same log. So we keep the x to the third, z to the second. All right, let's try this one. So again, we have a couple of coefficients. We pull this 6 to the to the uh, exponent place. Pull this 3, which is a coefficient of the natural log, up here to an exponent place. So we end up with natural log of x to the 6 um, minus the natural log of y to the 3rd. But now since I'm subtracting these logs, I'm going to be dividing or making a fraction out of these arguments. So the first argument, which is x to the 6, is now the numerator. And the second argument, right, the one we're subtracting, uh, we're going to use that argument of y to the third, right? Okay, let's move over here. We have an 8 uh, coefficient. We're going to turn that into an exponent. We have a 5 coefficient. We're going to turn that into an exponent. So we end up with natural log of x plus 2 over 8 minus natural log of x to the fifth. Okay, now because we're subtracting, right, this is still subtracting, we're going to make another fraction out of the arguments, right? So this first argument divided by this second argument, or this would be the, the numerator, and this would be the denominator. Okay, so we end up with x plus 2 to the 8 all over x to the fifth. And there we go. Let's try another one. Now this is a little confusing. Uh, you can actually, comp there's a couple of ways to do this. One is you can combine the first two with a, into a product, uh, adding the x and, and the y. Since you're adding, you could take, you have three different arguments here, right? So if you do the addition, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna make a product of the first two arguments. Whereas if you use the second two argument, you could do that instead to begin with, and then you would do make a fraction out of the second two. They'll both end up working, uh, but I'm just going to do uh, the first two. Okay, so first I'm going to get rid of this three coefficient. I'm going to pull it to the front. Pull it up here uh, from the front as a coefficient to an exponent. Next I'm going to pull this five up over the y as another exponent. I'm going to pull the two up over the z as an exponent. So we end up with natural log of x to the third plus natural log of y to the fifth minus natural log of z to the second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deal with the, the addition first to make a product. So I'm going to make natural log of x to the third y to the fifth. And I'll just do this as a second step. Now that I'm dealing with the subtraction, I'm going to put this that argument as a, a denominator in the bottom, right? So I'm going to keep the x to the third, y to the fifth, and I'm going to put that over z to the second. 
over here in the next problem. Um, let me just go across. Can I have a few different ways of doing this? Um, I, okay, so first of all, let's just deal with this one. We have this and this are the arguments for the first two terms. It's addition. We're just going to end up making a product of those two. So it's going to be a log x times x squared minus 16. And then minus, and what I would do is I would actually factor this negative out, and that would leave me log of 9 minus log of x plus 4. And by factoring the negative out, that would turn that to addition. So I can make a product of these. The 9 and the x plus 4. I don't have to do it this way. I'm trying to avoid a complex fraction. Um, so we would end up with a log of 9 times x plus 4. But this is all still being subtracted, right? So if we have a log of x, x squared minus 16, minus this, the subtraction is going to make the first argument, right, that's going to be the numerator, and the second argument is going to be the denominator. And the subtraction is going to make this a fraction. Now I'm going to factor this. I'm going to factor this. Uh, so that's going to be log x, x plus 4, x minus 4. I'm going to put that over 9, x plus 4. Right, so it looks like the x plus 4s would cancel out. And you'd end up with log x, x minus 4 over 9. So that was a bit more difficult. There are several different ways of doing the, the first two problems. Uh, depending, you could have done the division first. You could have worked on that first and then done the addition. In this case, uh, you didn't have to factor the negative out, it would have worked another way. You just had to deal with some kind of a complex fraction. So there are multiple ways of doing both of these problems correctly. Okay, this one just says use common logarithms or natural logarithms and calculate to evaluate the expression. So what you do is you're going to take the log of the argument and then you're going to put that over the log of the base. And then um, you're going to divide that, and you should get um, a very close approximation as to what it is equal to. So I'm going to have to use a calculator on this eventually. So what I mean by that is this is the argument. So in this case, we would put log. So you can do log base 10, which is just default, 14 over log. And you would just do, uh, and again, this is base 10 over 11. And theoretically, that should give you an approximation of the answer. Now, before I, I figure out what that is on a calculator, I'd like to move over here. And what you can do is the reason it says logarithms or common logarithms or natural logarithms is you could do the same trick, but with natural log. So natural log of the argument. So this is the argument. So put that on top. 87.5. And we would make a fraction over the base, which would be a natural log of. 15. Okay, so whether you use, uh, the reason we use log and natural log, one reason is you can do this on a calculator actually. Almost all calculators have a log, a uh, default log which is base 10 log, and a natural log. Um, whereas they might not have a base log of 11 that you're going to be able to type in there, there to get an answer. So you might have to use this trick to actually figure out what these logarithms are actually equal to if you have some weird bases. Okay, so the natural log of 14 is this really horrifically long number 1.1461280 one, so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 I'll add one more because why not that rounds to about 4 okay write that out and the log of 11 is a 
five, something like that, blah, 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 right? And what we would do is we would divide uh, one by the other, and we'd get some kind of very rough approximation on the calculator. I don't have a good calculator on me, so I have to type everything out. So 1.1461288804 equals. Okay, so this would give you something, you know, 1.1. And it's got like zero zero out of six way out here, so it's 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 pretty close to one point one. Okay, so the next one we have to calculate as well. So it would be an eighty seven point five, and you would take. In this case, we're doing a natural log. So this natural log would be something like four point four seven one six three eight seven nine three three six blah 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 blah. It just goes on forever, right? All right. So it takes something crazy like that, and we will divide that by the natural log of 15, which is a 2.70805020011. Da, 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 just keeps going forever, right? And if we finish that off. We should get something like 1.6512392538, uh, dot, 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 whatever, something like this. So that would be our approximation. Now, technically, these are approximations, so you should probably use a squiggle. This is an approximation or about. So I think over here, once we start getting into the, all these decimals, these become squiggles or abouts approximations. And that's it.